This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Edge don't want you to hear them. Conjure, if you aspire, a standing policy in which the chief executive, assuming we were still burdened with one, articulates and endorses the, uh, the individual and spontaneous actions to be taken against any hostile takeover, a hostile take, <laughs> hostile invader. Uh, imagine she merely uh, delivers uh, a speech. Mm or establishes a pre-existing directive and policy. Well, this can be affected with ease, even from hasty exile, or immediately previous to capture. Such an invocation would surely have an electrical effect against all. An electrical effect uh, on all who call uh, the new nation home. There is... Virtually no, virtually no limit to the number of feats uh, that a patriot can endeavor. If she knows that the whole or even a plurality of her nation is behind her. It need not be nearby. It need only be availed in spirit and perhaps official articulation. Returning to the latter, uh, imagine further a constitutional or a statutory prohibition mm, uh, nullifying in advance any surrender directives, as General Guisson reportedly did when he gathered his officers in the valley where Switzerland was born. <clears throat> the executive uh, perhaps uh, could be tasked with articulating uh, publicly uh, the basic uh, suggested course of resistance, probably from exile or hiding, but the stand-down decision could be delegated constitutionally to each combatant uh, and commentator. Perhaps an official uh, New Hampshire military uniform could exist and be employed... Oh, crappy. Mm -hmm. Be employed to exist, ah. we exist, uh, exist and be employed and be employed by those, however independent, wishing to purchase one and maintain lawful combatant status. Those willing to risk execution upon capture would have the option of fighting in plain clothes as the Dutch resistance usually did during the Second Great War, and to the human force or collection of forces which we would be able to array against the aggressor, aggressor uh, perhaps it is best to think in terms of the small and untrained, rather than the massed and heavily drilled. An American soldier once remarked uh, that the Afghan peoples who have, uh, who have so flummoxed their centralized army are surprisingly fragile. While we may and should decry their cruel internal treatments of their own countrymen, should we not also learn from them as a wise strategist learns from any counterparty? Casting aside where ethics dictate the poor examples they have set, while showing consideration toward those auspicious, though infinitely different from the Swiss and perhaps all of the other ways that matter, they share uh, the lack of recognized central authority. A dispersal of arms and some tendency toward neutrality or friendliness 
toward all who are not perceived as invading them. Do these characteristics of unconquerability offset or do they complement their other conventional deficit, the usual lack of well-trained or properly organized military other than that created from outside? When they have attempted one, it is tended to be uh, outmaneuvered by the tribes or crushed from outside. This may be an indication that the mechanisms on which to affix a free state's preservation are not those of a substantial military or even heavily trained individuals, but those of a different, of a different question. Perhaps it is uh, wisest to ask what could be done with what we already have. Um, uh, what could be done with what would already be here? I don't like Freedom Radio Talk. Listening to LRN FM makes me balk. Far from it, I should probably walk. LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them.